Right guys, unless you've been living under a rock, you'll have heard that here in the UK we've had some changes to our licensing conditions from Ofcom. Um, most notably being that we can run a lot more power uh, and especially for full license holders. So now we can run one kilowatt peak envelope power uh, at the antenna and I think that's actually a good thing because that accounts for a lot of feeder losses uh, and the likes. And it's just happened to be that I've just finished um, a high power NFED half wave antenna and a few of you have been asking me, um, you know, I want a, an NFED half wave that can run a bit of power. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, I'm a little bit mixed on the high power um, and to put you in the picture, I've had an Acom 1000 amplifier since 2012 and probably 99.5% of my QSOs have been without using the amplifier so it's not something that I use a lot but I do have a privilege of owning the amp and I would say that I'm very careful with the amp and that I've always designed everything around the amp so should I accidentally run more power whatever and um, you know no part of my system is going to actually fail and I think you need to do that too so if you're considering running a lot of power you need to use good coax you need to use good connectors and just generally make sure that your your system is tip top uh, i use messi and poloni ultraflex 7 um and there's a purely because it can handle the power what i need to run on the specified frequencies which is typically hf um, that's only where my amplifier works at actually in six meters 50 megahertz um, but uh, you know and, and that comes down to the cost as well so it's not too expensive about two pound a meter but you know spend your money on good coax so that's that's the housekeeping out the way so if you've been following the videos you know i've been doing testing on nfed half waves which i've said so um came to the conclusion and it's a discovery of mine but you know it's it's, it's not me i'm going to say it's a discovery but it's not really my discovery but i did some back-to-back -back testing and come up with um, a core, so it's an auto transformer, it's three cores of Fairwrite FT24052 stacked together and uh, we make an auto transformer which is a slightly different way to wind an NFED half wave, still a 49 to 1 um, and we found that so between, I'll, I'll need to try and put that graph up on screen again but it's, it's, it's basically very efficient where we need it to be on the HF spectrum now, I've then taken that uh, NFED half wave uh, transformer and I've actually built it into an enclosure and I'm not saying that it's the most pretty but I think it does a reasonable job for what we need to do here. I was a little bit worried about this core heating up so underneath the core I actually had one of my mounting plates from the last NFED half wave that I built and it's got a higher melting point shall we say than the plastic enclosure so I put that behind it. I didn't actually need that. Um, and on a lot of NFED half-wave transformers, I see a capacitor, which is a big, huge thing. Um, and I think, well, why do you actually need that? Um, because if you actually look at the maths and the physics, even if you run a big power, say a kilowatt uh, on an NFED half-wave, your capacitor doesn't actually need to be that highly rated. And off the top of my head, I think it was something like seven or eight hundred watts it needed to be rated at. Well, these are three kilovolt capacitors. They're made, made by TDK, so they're not cheap rubbish. So I always say put good capacitors into your NFED half wave and the capacitor handled it um, absolutely no problem at all. So I set up this NFED half wave on a, a 12 meter, 12.4. It was a DX Commander pole. Um, it's very similar to the Spider Beam, but what I would say is it's slightly longer and it's actually slightly heavier. Um, there's not much between them, but it's just, it's, I think it comes down to the user, but I'd say it's ever so slightly heavier duty um, over the spider beam. And what I noticed is when I was actually putting it up, um, it was just that little bit more heavier, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, I guide this pole at the bottom and I also guide it halfway up and that was using the spider beam guide belt because we had a, a bit of wind. I ran the antenna with my reel system. And the reason I did that was it was very quick. I could adjust um, the resonance on the fly um, and I knew it could handle high power. So I set the antenna up as a monoband for 20 meters. I would have worked on 10 as well, but I set it up for 20 meters and I run the antenna about six o'clock local time. 
So the band wasn't fully, uh, it, it was open to Europe, it was starting to close, but it, it wasn't going long yet like you like you would typically see that would maybe happen for another um, another hour or two, which I, I couldn't be on. So I wound up the amplifier um, and we gave it a good go at uh, a kilowatt. And I'll let you have a listen to these uh, QSOs now. Right, so we made all in all about 30 contacts off the top of my head. They were all round about Europe. I did have a little bit of a pile up going. Um, but what I would say was that I was probably running too much power. Um, and the reason I say that was I was appearing deaf to a lot of stations. Quite often the stations were five and five, five and six to me. And they were telling me I was five, nine plus 10, five, nine plus 20. So more power does work. You could say that it's an efficient antenna, which probably is the main thing, um, but it really was probably too much power. <clears throat> now, after making those 30 or so contacts on single sideband, I then went to CW. I then left the power set and I was running a kilowatt on CW in 20 metres. And all told, that was probably a waste of time. But I only did that um, in order just to stress the transformer a little bit. I wish I had a temperature sensor in it, but I need to maybe think about that and how we did that. So I run CW, one kilowatt, calling CQ for about 20 minutes. I did work a couple of stations there, and funnily enough, the station that came back to me, Nosker Mike Station, they were running 25 watts and they were 599, real, you know, real 599. So again, running a kilowatt in CW is a complete waste of time. So, you know, you don't need to do it, guys. Um, but the purpose of me doing that was really was just to stress the infed half wave transformer. Once I took the antenna down at the end of the night, I then took the enclosure off the infed half wave. So this it maybe been about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to take it down. I opened up the enclosure and the transformer was barely warm. So it was it, it wasn't cold, but it wasn't warm, as I would say. So everything looked absolutely as it went into the box. Um, no difference, absolutely. The capacitor was absolutely spot on. So, not a, a conclusive test for the NFED Halfwave because I've not tested it on a lot of the other bands, just an initial test. Um, but if you want to run a, a power through that sort of auto transformer with the 24052 cores, I was using big wire on this. I think this is two millimeter wire. Um, you could probably go a little bit smaller, but you know, keep to wire that's round about that if you want to run uh, a bit of power. Some good housekeeping, as I mentioned earlier, about using good coax. Um, I used a counterpoise wire on this, um, and I also used a choke. It was a GM3 SEK choke, which was actually this one here. This is actually high power coax. It's RG. It's a form of RG142, so it's rated probably two and a half, three kilowatt. So we ran that. Absolutely great. I had no RF coming back into the ch shack whatsoever. Um, uh, from an, an EMF point of view and a compliance for here in the UK, I went onto the Ofcom and I did the calculator and I needed about four metres of separation or I think it was just under that. 
So I had four meters of separation to each of the fences. So my the bottom of my fence and the side of my fence. So it was away from the general public. Um, so bear that in mind as well. And the, probably the eagle eyed of you will notice that when I was calling on 20 meters, I probably shouldn't have been on that frequency. I was on 14300. I just couldn't find a, a spot. I just kept going up and up and up. So I think that's actually like a maritime a mobile frequency or maybe even like a, a, a an emergency frequency so somebody did say to me and then I, I, I moved up later on so my bad I, I put my hand up to that we'll do something wrong one time or another so there we are um, let me know what you think um, I'm a bit split on this it's not something that I'm going to do a lot is run high power on an antenna such as that I would much rather do it on something where I had a bit of gain but somebody gave me an idea today on Twitter when I was posting about it. What if I was to have this antenna and then put up a, di a director behind this? So 5% longer behind a wire vertically, um, a bit behind it. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Imagine getting 3 or 4 dB gain from that coupled with the amplifier. Your ERP is going to be, you know, a couple of kilowatts. That would be really cool to do, so I think that's something I will consider doing, but I need to do that in uh, a bigger space. Okay, guys, I hope that was of use to you. Uh, once again, um, let me know if there's anything else specific you'd want to test. As I say, testing with uh, the cores, uh, some sort of temperature probe would be good. Um, I'm, I'm having a look to see what I can do You know, at reasonable cost. All right, guys, 73, all the best, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.